point guard spot for Oregon. Bowley, the three-point and Prince finally eligible and healthy for the Oregon Ducks. Flug, Moheim, Frawley, Fowler, and Walker will go for the Pilots, noticeably missing Jennifer Mountain. And it's a disappointment saying no Haley Andrews tonight. Yeah, she's out with a concussion, uh, suffered in practice the other day. And, you know, with protocols these days, they'll be out for about five days. So they'll be, uh, it'll be nice to get her back for them. Both clubs at 1-0 and on this very young Crazy season so far. Both teams having defeated Seattle. Portland defeating Seattle University 82 to 70, while the Ducks defeated Seattle 116 to 51. Ducks on the board just like that. Yeah, Portland opened up in a zone defense. Um, one thing, you know, you got to make sure they locate shooters, and they did a nice job of going through the high post. What about the size advantage? That is very noticeable for the Ducks tonight, Jen. Yeah, I mean, Oregon is extremely long in all spots. That's going to be probably a key for, uh, you know, Portland and what they're doing and just mismatches. Got to be smart, and, you know, hopefully they'll mix it up a little bit. Good look there by Fowler, back rim and off, and the Ducks will come the other way. That was a nice offensive possession. They took their time. You know, sometimes, especially early in the year, it can go a little bit too fast, but it was nice tempo. Look inside. Pow Pow off the hands of Prince. Pilots picked third in the WCC this year, Jen. Last year, as we know, picked last, and yet it was the Portland Pilot Ball Club winning the WCC tournament in dramatic fashion going to the NCAA big dance until, of course, COVID struck. Yeah, I mean, they, I mean, the story, we keep talking about it, that's for sure, but uh, there's not going to be any surprises this year. There, there's no underdog for Portland in the conference, so they, they you know, pick top three, that's a nice job, um, but from now on, and, you know, they, he's got this thing rolling, they've got to just keep their play up. Bowley, number six in career threes for the Oregon Ducks, was 0 for 4 against Seattle. She quickly makes good on that triple five nothing ducks early the pilots have gotten good looks jen they've just got to convert absolutely I, I don't like their i mean i don't mind their offensive possessions whatsoever um they just got to be smart and get good shots every single time down they don't want to go too fast i mean one of the keys for them tonight is not to turn the ball over um they had 24 turnovers against seattle first time out that's going to be a huge factor all right, other keys to the game. Control Fowler is going to be awfully important because obviously she's going to carry the, the freight for the pilots. Yeah, I mean, keys to the game for them are Control Fowler, um, for Oregon anyway, and then Tempo. You saw it that last possession. He's going to come with a Tempo press just to kind of slow things up and mix it up. Pow Pow picked up that foul, by the way, moments ago. Her first, team's first, stepping through nicely in a lot of traffic, and that's Fowler going up against Prince and finishing. Little heat coming from the Pilots. And I think this is one of the keys for Portland tonight is tempo. You know, they're, and Michael Meek, it's his style. They want to be in your face and make things happen and make you uncomfortable. 7-2 now as the Ducks able to beat that press and Bowley getting a wide open look. The, the thing that Portland or Oregon is trying to do to Portland right here is to not allow them to run stuff in the half court. You know, that tempo press, by the time they get here, it's 18, 20 seconds in the half court. It shows your offense and it makes it look a little different. Let's talk about keys to the game for the Pilots, Jen. You've got them here. Yeah, keys to the game are they've got a rebound um, on both ends of the floor. Keep Oregon off the three-point line. They have a lot of different kids that they can go to in perimeter shooters. And like I said earlier, limiting their turnovers. How pow with the block. Finds Bully. She's already got seven. Prince quickly turns around and cans it. And that's where Prince will hurt you. Really, the range is limitless for this kid. She's got a great fadeaway. I mean, for her size. I mean, she can shoot a fadeaway from the free throw line, which at, at her length, it's really hard to guard. Lauren Walker. Wide open. And that's a big stick for the pilots. They gotta stay close, Jen. Especially early on. You don't want to yep. get, you know, Oregon un uh, available to go on runs. Um, got to be smart about it. And again, that's going to be one of the things they've got to rebound on both ends of the floor. Prince tried to get fancy there. Wasn't able to convert. So let's see if the pilots can draw ever closer. 
Pflug. The transfer from Pepperdine, who had to sit out last year, has been an impact player for Michael Meek in her first season with the Pilots. You know, I remember watching this kid when she was in eighth and ninth grade. I think I had her at uh, camp at Portland State. Um, you know, recruited at Pepperdine, decided to come back home, set out. This is an advantage here for Mike where you have somebody that's been in the program, gone through practice. Now she's stepping in, you know, obviously with Andrews out at the point guard spot yep. for him tonight. Had 14 points against Seattle the other night. And what I really loved about Flug was the eight assists. So she really filled up the stat sheet that Meek needed her to do. Yeah, unselfish player, looks to get the ball to people when, you know, she should. And she has the ability to score, and that's a great job right there of getting hands on ball, disrupting, and getting turnover. So the pilot's sticking around. At the rack. How about that? What I like, that I, what I see so far, is they're not intimidated whatsoever. They're going right at Oregon. They're going to take it to them and try to make things happen. Foul's going to go against the Pilots. Just a great anticipation on that pass right there. Gets her hands on. You know, a lot of coaches actually chart disruptions in the half court. Cutter Prince finds Chavez. Nicely done by the Ducks. You know, and talking with coaches, you know, before the game, and a lot of things that Oregon is going to try to do offensively is go through that high post with Prince, with cutters, with screeners, um, a variety of different things. And right there, Portland just didn't jump to the ball. Baseline jumper, nothing there. We're going to go the other way. Again, the Pilots getting good looks, high percentage looks, Jen. Yep, just got to knock them down. 11-7, Ducks with the lead. Foul against the Pilots again. Mulheim picks up that foul. Her first, team's second. Gorsman will check in for the Pilots. Meek with a much deeper bench this year. Health and just some, and, and we're not talking about the freshmen, just health and returners. Absolutely. Um, in talking with Coach before, you know, in the last, the last week or so, you know, he's talking about we're healthy. We've got people that have, you know, played minutes. They've got kids that have come in that are, you know, getting the system down. They haven't had a lot of time to practice and play five on five. So, I mean, it's really relatively new to everybody. Kai Tu missing there. Great to have her back after the knee injury last year. Wanting to run the pilots. Nicely done on the one and done and just breaking free and Fowler finishes. Great advance pass, looking up the floor. And Fowler, she's, that's not a shot she's not going to miss. One possession lead for the Oregon Ducks. Keep in mind, Oregon comes into this thing having won 20 straight going back to last year as Prince draws the foul. And they've won five straight against the Pilots. Yeah, and, and like I said earlier, I love how aggressive Portland's coming at on the offensive end and on the defensive end, trying to make things happen in the press and then getting decent shots in the half court. Gorsman picking up that foul, her first, team's third. The Oregon Ducks, heavy favorites against the Portland Pilots. The Pilots playing without their playmaker, and yet Portland within a deuce. We're about midway through the first quarter. Come on back. Good ball. Welcome back to the Child Center. We're on the bluff. The hometown Portland Pilots hanging tough against ninth-ranked Oregon, 11-9. Oregon with the lead, Jen. 4-19 left to go in the first quarter. How is Portland being so successful this this uh, first quarter against Kelly Graves and the Ducks? Well, like I said, I think they're bringing pressure. They've already turned them over two times. The other night against Seattle, Oregon had three turnovers for the game. So the fact that they've already done that in the first, you know, five minutes of this this contest, I mean, they're throwing them out of their rhythm a little bit, and I think that's going to be a really, thing, really good key going forward. So Prince will tee it up. Hands the first one, the 6'7 redshirt sophomore out of Texas, and the transfer out of the University of Texas. Finally eligible, had to sit out last year after transferring because her the waiver for instant eligibility was denied. So Graves and company just so thrilled to have her on the floor. Yeah, it's always hard sitting out as a player when you finally get that chance. You know, her first game the other night, I think she was thrilled. 
Niara Sabali on the floor for the Oregon Ducks. Turnover will go against the Pilots and the travel. We got Coach Meek's daughter in the game. You know, it's always a, a, a cool thing when you have a coach's daughter um, on the floor. I, you know, she's been obviously around him for a long time, and he's coached her. It's, it's going to be great to see what she does her four years here. Great spot for her. Yes. Great spot. And again, the Portland Pilot pressure causing a little angst on the duck sideline, and they quickly have to call a timeout. Yeah, they're not handling the pressure full court by any means, and that's one thing that's going to come at them this entire 40 minutes is they've got to be smart about it, not turning the ball over. On the Portland side, great job of making them uncomfortable. you got to remember, folks, that the Oregon Ducks graduate the big three, and, and those are three of the great the Oregon Ducks, and that, of course, is Sabrina Ionescu, Ruthie Hebert, and Satu Sabli, all first-round draft picks in the WNBA. So without that playmaker in Ionescu, Obviously, it's going to take a while for somebody to take over that kind of role for Kelly Graves and the Ducks. Oh, absolutely. We talked about chemistry with him and, you know, with all the protocol and the things that they're doing, they're not getting the chance to build that chemistry like they normally do it would in a regular season. So it's going to be interesting early, but, you know, again, he graduates the top three there, you know, the top three draft picks, are, you know, and uh, they're top ten in the country. Broken play. Prince misses. Oregon with two point-blank shots as Jazz Shelley and Maddie Shear check into the Ducks lineup. And it's a deep, deep Oregon bench. My goodness, Kelly could play 10, 11, 12 players, Jen. Yeah, I think he said the other day, um, just chatting with him, that he's going to play 12 right now. You know, just trying to get different combos. A lot of coaches early in the season, that's what you're trying to do. Mike's going to do the same thing. He's going to run people in and out, fresh legs, try to make things happen in different combinations. Meek going to send three players in, including Tyler McClement Call. You know, that's one thing when you're a little bit smaller than your opponent. You press and you make things happen. You know, big kids sometimes don't like those pesky little guards all around them. I hear you. Oregon starting red hot. They're 0 for their last four. And again, the pilots hanging around. More yeah. of the heat, wide open for Giomi, who had a double-double the other night. Giomi is going to go to the line. Tyler McClempett call picks up her first. That's actually a good foul. I mean, it's going to be an automatic two. First in the game, first few minutes for her defensively. Make a shoot at the free throw line and make points. McClempett call. Tyler, she wears number 21. Twin sister Jackson wears number 34. You'll get to know them for the pilots. Mom was a Gonzaga basketball player yeah. back in the day. WCC family. You know you were. My goodness, could you score the ball? Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> well over 1,000 points, Jennifer Mountain. That was a long time ago, man. Don't care. The points still stick right there in front of me when I'm looking at it. The scorebook. The Clement call gets rid of it. Wants to set that pick up top. Seven on the shot clock now. Flug hesitates, and now the pilots are going to have to throw something up. Weak side rebound. There's Fowler. And another turnover for the pilots who've had a few too many of those lately. Yeah, that possession was just a little uh, jagged. I mean, they didn't have a lot of flow, didn't get any movement. That's one thing. you got to make defense move side top side. Neither team filling it up. A little cold from the floor for both clubs. Yeah, and again, you know, that could be jitters. That could be just early in the season, not getting great shots. Right now, Portland's making Oregon go faster than they want yeah. to. That's a great call as Sydney Paris checks in for the Oregon Ducks. Let's see if the Pilots, Jim, can avoid the turnover bug. It's really hurt them. They're still only down by five, two possession game with 2.10 left. They need a basket. Absolutely need a great backdoor cut right there. Ah, high percentage, no good. 
Fowler with a terrific pass. Bashir couldn't finish. Lucky break there for the Bucks. Sobley never saw it coming, went off her backside. Sobley so strong, coming off two ACLs, back on the floor, and yet she's whistled for the infraction. Travel. Yeah, both teams just out of sorts and turning the ball over a little too much. Ducks have been ice cold after Bowley had that fiery first couple of minutes. And now the team's struggling to score. Back rim and off, wide open three. Parrish yanks it down, part of that Fab Five. Number one recruiting class for the Oregon Ducks. Sabali, good ball movement by Oregon up top. Pilots reacting well defensively. And the block is gonna go against the pilots. Shear picks up her second. Team's fifth. I like that offensive possession that last time down for Portland. Um, nice little back screen for Fowler. Like we said, I mean, got to get her some touches early in this game and get her going. Gorsman back on the floor for the pilots. We've been stuck on 14 to 9 for a while. Nice touch there by Maddie Shear. 5'11", freshman out of Kentucky. Yeah, both teams just a little out of sword mm -hmm. offensively. Three thirty drought, three minutes and 30 second drought for the Pilots, that's gotta change. One minute to go in this opening quarter. Another turnover. Ducks want to push. I mean, you can hear Coach Graves just yelling solid. They just want solid play. Ball tipping off of the Pilots. 18 seconds on the shot clock. Just a smidge over 39 left in this opening quarter. Ducks leading from the get-go. open look inside by Parrish. That was a nice little out-of-bounds play. Yeah, it was. Portland needs a great possession right here and get a great shot. High-quality shot. Ball's up for grabs. Shot clock off. 12 on the game clock. And the Pilots end the drought in dramatic fashion. Mulheim looking for Fowler. Off balance. So that'll do it. First quarter, the Ducks using a 7-0 run to increase their lead to 18-9 after the first quarter of play. Pilots hanging around. It was 9-7 for a while there, but right now, Oregon doubling up the lead. For Mountain, that is the banner. That is testimony and testament to what the Portland Pilots did last year, WCC Tournament Champions. Amazing run. I mean, I got to be a part of it the last two months, and from watching him from the first game to that actual championship, uh, phenomenal. So hopefully he can just move and bring that momentum into this season, bring new kids in, and, and continue the great success. Portland's first NCAA tournament appearance since 1997, or what would have been. Automatic qualifier winning that WCC tournament. First WCC tournament title since 94. You can just go on and on as the second quarter is underway. Another pilot turnover. Dugalich on the floor for the Ducks. Misses inside Sabley, you bet. I mean, that's the thing that really transfers is turnovers into points. And right there, we talked about it. They've got to do a better job of taking care of the basketball. Four turnovers in that last four minutes of yep. the first quarter. And just, they're not, they're struggling offensively because they're not getting any movement. They're trying to create one-on-one. -on -one. So Parrish picks up the foul, her first, team's first. And you mentioned the turnovers, Jen, to end that first quarter. That's how the Pilots begin the second quarter. And you see the lead follow accordingly. 
Correct. I mean, you take away opportunities to score and then create opportunities on the other end for somebody else. So, again, they're just not getting the motion that they want offensively. I think they need to get Fowler more touches. Yes. And uh, just kind of move the ball a little bit better instead of one-on-one. -on -one. Four on the shot clock. Oh. Fowler, desperation, rims out, basket did. Watson, one of those Fab Five freshmen. Kylie out of New Jersey. And all of this freshman class, every one of them, Jane, what you, you say is Gatorade <laughs> State Player of the Year, fill in whatever state they're from. McDonald's, Jordan, All-American, fill in whatever state they're from. Exactly. Unbelievable freshman class for Graves. Yeah, I mean, when you have McDonald's All-Americans coming in across the board, you know, doing something right. Um, you know, now it's just going to be a, a fact of keeping everybody happy and getting them playing time. The pilots have been stuck on nine for a long while, about midway through the first quarter. I like that they're still being aggressive, trying to take people off the bounce. Really think right now they've got to get some movement with the pass, make the defense shift, get Fowler the ball inside a little bit, crash the boards. Dugovic with that foul, her first, team's second. Nice job by Liana to take contact and she'll go to the line as the reward. That was a better possession. They're going against Oregon zone, swung the ball to the other side, high post action, got herself to the free throw line. So Saboli picks up that foul. Here's a good look at Emmy Shearer out of New Zealand. Well, I'll tell you, Mike's done a great job of going overseas. Mm. You know, I mean, look at all the success that he's having with the Australians. I mean, WCC is, has been known for that, obviously, in the past, a lot of schools. But, you know, you, you get a little bit higher impact player coming in just because they play at a different level. They play different type of ball. They don't have high school basketball. They have club ball. And it's just uh, a little bit more experienced. So Kaitu gets one of two. And an interesting note, Jen, is Lucy Cochran, who was a freshman for the Ducks last year, has transferred to the University of Portland, but can't get stateside yet. Yeah. The national travel's got her all, everything's all bogged down in her, over in Australia, down in Australia. Yeah, COVID's created, uh, I think, a lot of that for a lot of different teams. I mean, she's not eligible to play right this second, but... Right. You know, uh, once you transfer from a school, you got to get your papers all done again. So she's stuck and with embassies closed and this and that. Um, she hasn't been able to enter the country yet. So they're anxiously awaiting for Cochran to even get here. As Watson picks up the foul, her first team's fourth. Another connection between these two schools. Graves coached at the Pilots. Cochran played for the Ducks. Jennifer Mountain, coached with Kelly, coached against him. I could go on and on. Come on back, 2010, Ducks with the lead, early in the second. Back at the Child Center on the campus of the University of Portland, the ninth-ranked Oregon Ducks leading the hometown pilots 20 to 10 were early in the second quarter. Hey, back in August, the University of Portland Athletic Department established a standing committee that is going to focus on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Now, this committee will serve as a moral compass for the department and provide recommendations to the leadership team on basically how to create a more inclusive environment for its student athletes, the coaches, of course, staff, and future members of the department. Diversity, equity, inclusion, top priority for the athletic department this year. Primary goal, I love it. And as we know, sports have a unique way to bring people together regardless of any differences. And the U of P Athletic Department chooses to celebrate those. Love it. It's awesome. Yeah, it really is. And we'll, we'll keep tabs of that because we could all learn a little something about the endeavors there. Okay, how about Flug saying, all right, I'm going to back myself down, Jennifer Mountain, into the paint and give myself a high percentage look. Yeah, I mean, again, it's just one-on-one. -on -one. She made a great, great play there. Ball tied up. Pilots 
hoping that they could grab that ball loose and go the other way. Instead, the possession arrow will favor the Oregon Ducks. 20 to 12, Oregon with the lead. Portland's pressure is taking Oregon out of what they want to do offensively. They don't have any rhythm, any flow, and that's a testament to what they're trying to do. Uh, they just have to. I, I'd love to see Portland get a little bit higher percentage shot. Right now they're shooting 26% from the field and uh, getting more people involved. Meek picks up that foul, her first team's second. And I'm with you there as Oregon continues, both clubs really going deep into their lineup. Mike's all back on the floor, Prince as well. Got to remember, Oregon dropped 116 points on Seattle the other night down in Eugene, led 71 to 25 at the half. Absolutely, and that's a testament to what Portland's doing. They're taking them out of their rhythm, taking yep. them out of what they want to do. They're not comfortable. Pow, pow, back rim and off. Meek wants to push. 6A, Oregon Gatorade Player of the Year, Mikhail Meek, daughter of head coach Michael Meek, as Jen told you. 15 on the shot clock, flew. Looking for a cutter, couldn't come off the pick. Mike's are fighting through. Here's Fowler. Pow Pow gets clobbered from behind. And I, I think what we're seeing too here um, offensively is again, they just haven't had a lot of chance to play. You know, with COVID, not having five on five, running through stuff. Um, they're doing a lot of workouts individually, so they're not getting a lot of sets in. And they're just not organized the way they normally would be. And it's preseason. Emmy Shear with her third foul of the game. She'll take a seat. Yeah, that's unfortunate for Portland. More heat. Mikesell gives it up. Chavez. Lazy pass. Meek with the pick inside. It's a great job defensively, again, making them go faster than they want. They just can't do what they just did and turn it right back over. Frawley throws it away. Pow Pow finding the wide open Chavez. Foley, mid-range, front rim and off. I mean, one of the luxuries that the Ducks have is they have so many different combos and they have so many, you know, so much height. I mean, Boley is a premier three-point shooter and she's at the high post for him. Right now. Meek turns it over via the travel as Mulheim checks back in for the Pilots. Yep. So Pow Pow picked up by Fowler. Good ball movement by the Ducks. Pow Pow kind of hesitated and thought, why not? Grabs her own miss. Yep. Chavez wide open three, bam. Talking with Coach Graves, uh, you know, talking about Pow Pow, kid from you know, San Diego, who's he's yep. thinks she could be pretty darn special. Look at Prince inside. I just don't think, you know, Coach Meek, that's the type of, type of possession that he wants offensively. Right now, Fluke's just going a little bit too much one-on-one. -on -one. Yep. She's got to give it up and then get it back and get them into some type of rhythm. Flug with the foul. Her first, team's fourth. Pow Pow with her own knee issues and injuries in high school. Kind of chased away some suitors, but not the Ducks. Inside look, and it's a beauty to Prince. And that was basically a layup drill as Mikesell finds her. Yep, they did a nice job of breaking the press there. The lead balloons to 13 for the ninth-ranked Oregon Ducks. Pilots looking at another scoring drought. And obviously, that's not going to help the cause. Kaitu back on the floor for the Pilots. And Jen, you knew when Haley Andrews wasn't able to go today because of, uh, as you mentioned, in concussion protocol, that was going to really hurt and affect how the Pilots were going to operate their offense. Yeah, I mean, all of a sudden, you know, you go from 
something that you're used to. You got Andrews and the type of player that she is, and getting you stuff in, you know, getting you into rhythm offensively. And now Flug's, you know, Flug's thrown into there, even though she's played a lot of point guard. Um, but they just haven't had enough experience with her at that spot to yep. get themselves comfortable. Prince with her first foul, team's fifth. Mulheim, who is one of the most prolific three-point shooters for the Portland Pilots, the senior, really hasn't been able to get untracked and get any good looks from beyond the arc, Jen. No, and she can really shoot the basketball. I mean, he's got a lot of weapons with this group. It's just they've got to find a way to get themselves better opportunities on the offensive end. It's been a while since the Pilots have collected points. They'll take them any way they can get them. Ball goes off Prince. It'll be Portland's ball with 439 left to go in the second quarter. This would be a good time for a pilot run, Jennifer Mountain. Absolutely. They got to use this last four and a half minutes here to be smart. They made, made Morgan take a quick shot. Got a defensive rebound and off we go. Ball almost knocked away. Flug is able to corral it, but only 12 on the shot clock now. Pow Pow's got her on the perimeter. And another turnover as Kai Tu isn't able to flag that down with the lead hand. They've, they've looked to back cut Oregon quite a bit. Um, you know, every now and then it's going to work for you, but we've got to find something else to go to. Eight turnovers now for the Portland Pilots as Meek checks back in for U of P. Pow Pow inside look again into Prince and you can see when Pow Pow has got that head up. It's coming downhill, baby. I'll tell you, it's almost an automatic if Prince gets the ball at the block. Prince now with eight points to go along with four rebounds. Pow Pow with a couple of assists and you're right. Ball battered away, another turnover by the Pilots. Prince will show you the outside range. It's not a bad thing to have a 6'7 kid that yeah. can score from every spot on the floor. She didn't hesitate. Not one bit. That's the first field goal that the Pilots have had in over four minutes. Kai Tu breaks the scoring drop from the floor. And that was a nice in rhythm, nice looking jump shot. Great inside outside play. Pow Pow wide open, sticks it. What an answer from Pow Pow. Quick answer. She's so content to distribute and facilitate, but she shows you the good stroke as well. 10 on the shot clock, turnover. Chavez hesitates and hits. Oregon switched it up, went to that zone there again, and Portland just, you know, didn't handle the pressure very well. Got to recognize things early. 32-17. It was a two-point game in the first quarter as the Pilots were hanging tough. Prince blocking Walker inside. Pow Pow looking up, wants to go the other way. Oregon starting to heat up from the floor. Pow Pow. Bowley follows. Last two minutes here. Portland's got to slow the tempo a little bit, not allow Oregon to go as fast as they are right now. Bowley Make with a little nine. run. Yep, excuse me, Jen. Bowley with nine, leading everybody. Buck 40 left to go in the second quarter. And Oregon threatening to put this lead into the uncomfortable zone for the Pilots. Yeah, and speaking of zone, you know, Oregon's in, they, they're showing a little 1 3 1 look and then into a 2 3 kind of matchup. Great job right there by Portland of getting a, a high percentage shot. Boy, how badly did the Pilots need that? Frawley cans the big three. Big shot for him, I'll say. Fresh bodies for the Oregon Ducks for the last minute 20 of the second quarter. Ready? 
They're going to go the other way. That was a great call. Uh, Oregon stepped in and kind of hit somebody from behind uh, off that press. Yeah, wave off the basket. Yep. So Shelly. I don't think she really even needed to do that. She actually had an opportunity to score with nobody around. Shelly whistled for that foul, her first. So wave off the basket. Team's sixth foul. And Jen, if Portland's defense can stand tall and maybe the pilots pick up a couple of buckets, they'll feel pe pretty good about themselves going into the locker room. Absolutely. You know, you get a couple stops here, good offensive possessions, put yourself in a position where, you know, maybe you're down eight. I think they'd be pretty happy going into the half. See if they can get a good look for Fowler. She's been pretty quiet this half. You know you're going to load up on her if you're the defense. Ooh, there's the travel. Yep. The Clement call dragged that foot. Boy, that's a costly turnover for the Pilots. Yeah, that's just inexperience against pressure right there. Inbound to Shear. And she'll find Shelly. Shelly will go the other way. I think that off arm of Shelly kind of pushed off a little bit. So Shelly picks up the foul. That's her second. Team's seventh. Well, I didn't really see that, but maybe the off arm, like you said, she got a little bit of an extension. Let's see if the pilots can take care of the rock and get a high percentage shot. Walker wants it high post. Fowler, single coverage, stepping through and scores. Great up and under move, and that's a kid they got to get the basketball you bet. to. More heat. Great job defensively. And the pilot's bench is up and applauding and saying, yeah, Jennifer Mountain, the D is where it's, <laughs> well, what it's all about, man. Okay. Shot clock off, game clock at 20. Let's see what the pilots have. Really important here to, to use the whole clock. You, you're going into the half, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you turn the ball over or take a shot too soon. Seven for Fowler, single coverage. Sobley's got her. Had to pick up that dribble and now it's gonna be uh-oh time. That's a possession that the pilots would like to have back. So that